It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're going to compare and contrast Genesis chapter 1 to the Aluma Elish. And much later on in the video, I'm going to compare a story that talks about a person that's being born from a rib and compare and contrast that story to what's being said about the birth of Eve in Genesis chapter 2. So what exactly is the Aluma Elish and what year did it come out? The Aluma Elish, also known as the Seven Tablets of Creation, is the Babylonian creation myth whose title is the verse from the opening lines of the piece, When on High. The myth tells the story of the great god Murdoch victories over the forces of chaos and his establishment of order at the creation of the world. The modern day copies of the Aluma Elish that we do have can be dated back from 1200 BCE, but the copies that we do have is actually a much later on version of the same story, and it seems as though that there's actually speculation that older copies of the myth actually existed before the reign of Hammurabi of Babylon. It continues to say that the poem in its present form with Murdoch as a champion is thought to be a revision of an even earlier Sumerian work. Now the earlier Sumerian myth that they're referring to in the article is something that is known as the Anzu myth. I'll do the whole entire separate video going to great details between the Aluma Elish and the Anzu myth. But basically this is an image right here of the Anzu bird and the Anzu bird makes an appearance on many different occasions for different stories throughout the whole entire area of Mesopotamia. And this image right here is a surviving copy of what we have so far for the Aluma Elish for the creation story. So without further hesitation, let's compare and contrast Genesis 1 to the Aluma Elish. When the heavens above did not exist, and the earth beneath did not come into being, there was Absu, the first in order, there be Gadar, and Tiamat, who gave birth to them all. They had mangled their waters together before metal land had conceded, and red bed was he was found. He was not one of the gods he had formed, nor into being where no destinies had been decreed. The gods were created within them. So what does Genesis chapter 1 have to say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening and there was morning the first day. First and foremost, it's very important to say that when it says in the translation, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, it seems as though that is actually a mistranslation of the phrase in Hebrew, because according to scholars, it seems as though that was actually really saying in that whole entire passage is when God created the heavens and the earth. And so there was no such thing as a beginning when they wrote down the text. And so it should say when God created the heavens and the earth. Now let's get back to the passage. It says right here again that the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. So the question then becomes, what exactly is the word that's being used in Hebrew to say deep? The word that's being used in Hebrew is actually tahom. Now tahom means deep, depths, deep place, abyss, the deep, and the sea. Now scholars have noted that tiamat and tahom comes directly from the same root word. So the question then becomes, what exactly is tiamat? What is it talking about when it says Tiamat? Tiamat is the Mesopotamian goddess associated with primordial chaos and the sea salt best known from the Babylonian epic, the Aluma Elish, and all versions of the myth following the original 
Tiamat always symbolizes the forces of chaos, which threatens the order established by the gods, and Murdoch is the hero who preserves it. She is depicted in later periods as a female serpent or a dragon based upon the description of her in Illuma Elish. It's also worth noting that there's also hints of polytheism within Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have denomination over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heaven, and over the livestock, and all over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his image, and the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. There are three books I would recommend on the issue of polytheism for Genesis chapter 1. The first book I recommend is Stories from Ancient Canaan. The second book I would recommend is The Early History of God. And the third and final book I would recommend is The History of God that's written down by Karen Armstrong. Now to recap everything that we said so far, Basically, the similarities between both the Luma Elish as well as Genesis chapter 1 is that there was no such thing as a beginning because in both stories there are polytheism and basically many gods were actually involved in the creation of everything. Not only are there many different gods that are involved in the creation of the whole entire earth, but it seems as though that the God of the Bible, Yahweh, was actually creating the earth and has Tiamat coming out the water as he was creating the entire earth. Earlier in the video, I claimed that there's actually a story that directly influenced the story for Adam and Eve when it comes down to the idea of ribs. Now the story that directly influenced the idea that Eve comes directly from a rib comes directly from Anki and Nehishiga. Now let's compare and contrast the stories together. The man gave names to all livestock, and to the birds of the heaven, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs, and closed up his place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman, and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this was last is bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken from man. Nehersoth hastened to the temple. The Anana slipped off her garment, made, determined its destiny, and Nahaja made Anki sit by her vagina. My brother, what part of you hurts you? The top of my head hurts me. She gave birth to a boo out of it. My brother, which part of you hurts you? The locks of my hair hurts me. She gave birth to Nesikigal out of it. My brother, what part of you hurts you? My nails hurt me. She gave birth to Nagragadu out of it. My brother, what part of you hurt? My mouth hurt me. She gave birth to Nakagsi out of it. My brother, what part of you hurts you? My stroke hurts me. She gave birth to Nasi out of it. My brother, what parts of you hurts you? My arm hurts me. She gave birth to a Sami out of it. My brother, what parts of you hurts you? My rib hurts me. She gave birth to Nitsi out of it. Another aspect that both stories have is the fact that they both have the idea about the fall of man by eating the wrong fruit from a tree. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God has made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you should not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you should not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, neither should you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will surely not die, for God knows that if you eat with your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She grew the tree plant, she grew the honey plant, she grew the vegetable plant, she grew the asparto plant, 
She grew the atutu plant. She grew the atatau plant. She grew the plant. She grew the hamaru plant. His minister had the answer for him. My master, the tree plant, he said to him, cut it off for him, and Anki ate it. My master, the honey plant, he said to him, pull it up for him, and Anki ate it. My master, the vegetable plant, he said to him, cut it off for him, and Anki ate it. My master, the alfalfa grass, and he said to him, pull it up for him, and Anki ate it. My master, the atutu plant, he said to him, cut it off for him, and Anki ate it. My master, the altatel plant, he said to him, pull it for him, and Anki ate it. My master, the plant, he said to him, cut it off for him, and Anki ate it. My master, the hamaru plant, he said to him, pull it up for him, and Anki ate it. Anki determined the destiny of plants, how did he know it for in their hearts? Nihirsaja cursed the name Anki. Until his dying day, I will never look upon him with life-giving eye. The Anuna sat down in the dust, but a fox able to speak to a lily. If we bring a Nasaja to you, what would be my reward? A lily answered the fox, if we bring a Nasaja to me, I shall erect two standards for you in my city, and you will be renowned. What do you guys think about these parallels? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.